friends, it is time. I can't believe it's here. It is time to announce the chosen semifinalists for the inaugural, the first ever 2022 Spin Dad Trash or Bash Bike Build Off Competition. Um, 20 people chosen. It was really difficult to choose. There was 171 entrants. There was all sorts of different builds. This, this was more difficult than I anticipated. Now, keep in mind with 171 entrants, uh, obviously I was whittling it down to 20. I couldn't pick everyone. I hope, I hope it's okay. I hope it doesn't hurt your feelings too bad if I didn't choose your build. And I hope not being chosen doesn't stop you from doing the, uh, the plan project and uh, continuing on with it because you should. Let's get right in to our 20 contestants. Our initial 20, the semi-finalists, the ones who are gonna have to really put their plan into action. First is Brian Robichaux of the United States. Brian's gonna be taking a 1990 Jameis Citizen hybrid and converting it to a gravel bike. Definitely 1990s steel hybrids very much fall into the category of particularly subjectively not cool, but really good bones to make something cool. Second up, Lucas Berker, also from the United States, uh, found this pink 1990s Novera frame on Facebook Marketplace for 25 bucks, looking to turn it into a casual happy hour cruiser, trying to put a front rack on it, uh, making it a bit of a beater bike, and use as many, uh, use as many used parts as possible. Um, and then to confuse things, third, Lucas Blackburn, also from the USA, who doesn't have Instagram. Lucas, get, get Instagram, would you? This is gonna make life a lot easier for us when we're sharing all this. Um, also has, a Novera Strata steel road bike, converting it to a gravel bike. The thing that sold me on it is this photo of it sitting with disc brake wheels on it. The disc brake conversion is what sold me on seeing this bike get into this contest because it just looks insane. Fourth, Michael Campa from the United States. A lot of United States entries. Um, project description. Building a bike from the ground up, sort of. Basically, what it looks like is there's going to be a bunch of frames welded together for a uh, for a, something I can send and not break. I'll be fabricating and modifying a frame from two different bicycle frames I already have cut up and prefabbed a little. Also, I might be using parts from two other bicycles if needed. Um, I mean, yeah. Five. Peter Gehring, sorry if I didn't say your name right. Peter Gehring, also from the United States. Peter's build is a 2002 Specialized Rock Hopper, but looking to convert it from 26 to 27 and a half and uh, plan to make it enduro ready. Personally, I think it's a tall order. I wanna see it happen. I wanna see the final product. Peter, you're in. Six, six, Dave McGowan. Dave's project, something I've never seen in my life. It's a beat giant LaFree electric commuter bike that doesn't have a battery. So yes, e-bike in the contest. I wouldn't have thought there'd be any e-bike entrance. These would easily be uh, like thrown to the side and not really thought of as, as a, a potential project at all. So I think this kind of uh, could shed some light on maybe other people doing the same. I, like Next, Bruce Chaston. And you're in because you've, uh, you've got a 80s or 90s steel Schwinn Frontier that you're looking to make somewhat cooler. I'm just gonna show these pictures. Um, and I think most people can understand exactly why you're in. Next, Austin Fenn. Austin Fenn's got a really different project, uh, a folding bike, and he's gonna be turning into like a lowrider BMX pit bike show bike to, uh, to turn one into something head turning, I think is, is a cool idea. All right, next, and this one's gonna be a little bit controversial, but I had to choose it because it's something Dan and I spoke about a bunch where it's like, you know, I would, be, I would try to enter this contest myself with like, without a frame or without something. 
Um, like I would build a bike around, he has the, he has a surly ultra new hub. He's like, I'd build a bike around this and just try, like I'd try and figure it out from there. And I like that idea. So, uh, Miles Herman is kind of doing just that. He's got a set of uh, 650B flip-flop wheels with surly hubs, velocity cliffhanger rims. Thinking maybe a full suspension bike, full suspension single speed or uh, full suspension fixed gear. I don't know how you, you're not gonna be able to make that work, but um, this is this is one that I'm like, I'm taking a chance on. Miles, you've got a set of wheels. You're gonna have to pull something out that works. It's gotta work. And I hope it's sick. And the story better be good or I've wasted an entry on you uh, that maybe someone else could have gotten. But I'm willing, I'm willing to try. All right, next, Landon Banister from Latvia. I don't know what this bike is. It's super weird. The idea is to be turning it into like a, a slow 26 commuter, um, throw some track E parts on it, put some BMX cranks on it. But I think what sold me the most is wanting to fabricate his own fork and bottom bracket. So that's why I want that. That's why I want that build on here. Weird frame, manufactured fork. <coughs> Next, Terrence Ralston from Canada. You're starting with CCM Echo Finish. Looking to turn it into a bushwhacking overland bicycle like uh, his first Jeep in bicycle form. Andy Amos of Spain, you're in. You've got, uh, you got the Orbea, like an, a 2009 or bay a mountain bike into uh, something greater, like an adventure bike, gravel pack, like gravel bike, bike packing bike. Mid thousands aluminum frame mountain bikes are easily like the least creative inspiring platforms. So I kind of, I want there to be more exposure to them because I feel like with enough effort, they can be made cool. Um, and I think more people need to see it happen. Florian Putthoff. If I said your name right or not. Uh, country, Dutchland. So uh, this one's kind of cool. Turning an old Dutch hybrid that he found in the trash into a mountain biker's gravel bike packing bike using a mix of mountain bike parts uh, from spares and gravel kings. Uh, maybe welding on a disc brake mount. Of course, always a fan of the welding. Next up, Chris Nicotera building a light and fun single speed cruiser from a Trek 3700. Turning it into a, like a BMX with cruiser bars. Noah Morissette, United States, uh, taking a Trek multi-track 7000 because it's gonna get swapped to discs, possibly. 700C bike originally. He wants to see about swapping to 26 inch wheels. You're in. Jacob Doubling from Germany. I got a couple of these. I got, I did get a couple um, mini Omnium like builds, like ones where people wanted to build a, a small cargo bike. Um, I ultimately chose yours being a uh, 80s Centurion mountain bike frame with a 20 inch fork and uh, converting it to a, like a Omnium mini. Stefan Pollock from France. Stefan's got this, this bike that he bought at a supermarket. Um, and I understand exactly what that means, that he wants to turn into something. He's not like completely sure what that's gonna be yet. This bike is going to be in, I think, kind of tough to make look cool, but it is, it truly is not a cool bike to start out with. Brody Cox from the United States. Brody uh, looking to take a old cruiser and morphing it together with a KHS single speed that, uh, anyway. All right, two left. Um, Noah Sullivan, early 90s Trek multi-track that you found in a dumpster, um, brought the bike home with the suspicion that big 29er mountain bike tires would fit, a front rack on, maybe some wide swept back bars, doing your own custom frame bag. Okay, last, this is the last slot. Uh, Nathan Gascoigne from the United Kingdom. It's a 1989 
vintage mountain. It's like, I think it's a diamondback, isn't it? But Nathan took the time to shoot a video. It was really easy to follow everything that he was kind of looking to do. You're in, you are, uh, you are submission entry finalist 20 of 20. I look forward to getting updates from all of you that I can hopefully have posted on like community tab here that I can make regular videos with and uh, update through Instagram stories and Instagram posts to keep everyone engaged so that we know what is going on. Make sure to take pictures, document everything along the way. Make sure you remember to talk about all of the problems that your build gives you, um, all, all of that stuff. That always makes for really great story. That's my best, that, that's my best advice for you. If you can create a story around the bike that you're building, you don't just plot, present some sort of final product. I don't really know how I did it, but think of the rock hopper, like that bike, it's really kind of nothing to look at, but everybody loves it because it's just been here so long. We've done so much stuff with it. Um, so I suspect that it'd be beneficial for you and people voting for your builds to try to try and do the same. That is my advice. Please uh, keep me updated, keep everyone updated, market yourself, try to do the best you can to keep people convinced that you are and your build is the best option for their vote. And uh, if you weren't chosen, I truly, I hope, I truly hope that you don't take it personally. Um, th this was, it was really hard. It was really, really hard to, uh, to choose. I, I really wanted to have like a very broad amount of different projects. I wanted to have relatively simple ones. I wanted to have really, really ambitious ones. I wanted to have some, some different ones. I wanted to make sure that uh, there'd be a lot of interest in them. Of course, this is like something that has to help spin dat as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to not feel like a dick. Anyway, please keep following along. This is gonna be awesome.